All right, welcome to our Shine On team call tonight. We're so excited to hear from Rebecca, who just got back from the push retreat in Scottsdale, and she got so many awesome nuggets that she's going to share with us. Um, and then tonight is our goals night, so we'll be sharing our goals and making our goals if we haven't made them, um, and talking a little bit about the incentives that are happening this month and through the end of the year. So I'm super excited. All right, so Rebecca, take it away. All right. Well, the first thing, am I, yeah, I'm, I'm on, right? <laughs> can you hear me? Yes. I can. Okay, great. So the first thing that I um, just wanted to share is the whole time I was there, I was wishing all of you were there with me because it, um, I don't know, it's just such a great experience and you want to share it with, um, you know, the people that, that you work with all the time and that you love and that you're on a team with. And so um, hopefully we can all be at something together next year. So that would just be really amazing. Yes. And so, um, <laughs> what? I said, yes, we need to be. So I'll go to yeah. <laughs> yeah, it would be really fun. And this light is making me all weird and shiny. So I'm just going to go like that. Okay. So, um, one of the things that was really awesome about this push retreat is that, um, we got to have training from some people from corporate and I have to be honest with you. I was super excited for one person and I pretty much sacrificed to go because of, I knew we were going to get trained by, um, Jen Viev Scory. Is her last name Scory? Jen Viev Scory. And I first saw her at convention and she, I think I've seen her before actually in bits and pieces, but i really first saw her at convention. Um, and she was amazing. And she gave this really amazing presentation about the feel felt fine method that, um, I have used all summer and since convention. Um, she really inspired me to use that method with her presentation and I just loved her. And, um, and then I've sent in the, during the summer, I've been on a couple of corporate trainings with her. They do the Facebook lives and, um, I've been on a couple with her and she just really knows how to navigate. And I just think she's really talented and, and, um, I just really, I just feel drawn to her. And so she, um, on Friday we got to go to corporate, which is really awesome. Um, the, um, and one thing I did not know is they bought a piece of land across from where the corporate office is now, and they are building a bigger, better facility. And which is interesting because that facility that they're in, wasn't that brand new when I started, Leah? Do you know? Yeah, that was brand new when I started. So it's only been a couple of years old and they've already outgrown it. And so we got to tour and, um, and go and see the um, warehouse and that was really cool to like see where it kind of everything gets packaged and um, that was really interesting to be there. And then we were up in the jewel room and um, Jen Viev came and did this presentation for us and actually Leah posted it. Um, I mean, Emily posted it and Leah said that she saw it and it was really powerful. In fact, um, on that post that Emily did, I, um, I did a little comment saying how, how much of a girl crush I have on Jen Viev and, and that I was teary through most of her presentation. Number one, I couldn't believe that I was there and that I was like five feet from her. That was pretty amazing. But then she just, her training, the way that she trains just really speaks to my soul. And so I just wanted to share a little bit of that with you. And then I wanted, she did also on Saturday morning, come to the house and train with us. And so I have some things, some takeaways from that, that I want to share with you. And then there were two other people that we, that spoke to us that I want to briefly mention that were really powerful and impactful as well. And also, um, it was really powerful on Thursday night, the first night that we were there, we were all sitting around, out, uh, around the pool and those people who this was their first retreat got to stand and share their story. And so I got to do that. And it was, it's just so powerful when you get to share your own story with a group of people that you know appreciate it um, and are there for the same reasons that you're there and really, you know, understand why you're there. And it was really powerful. And I have to tell you that um, a couple of different people that night came up to me and just said that they really um, related to my story, which I, I was kind of shocked that, you know, people came up and said that, but then on Saturday, right as I was leaving to go catch my plane at the airport, this woman came up to me and said, um, 
I just, I'm totally coming out of my comfort zone, but I just want to come over and tell you how much I um, connected with your story on Thursday night. And can we get a selfie? And I was like, what? Yes, of course. <laughs> It was so interesting because that's how I feel about Jen Biev. I was like, I couldn't even go up to that woman. I was going to make a total fool of myself. Um, but it was just, it's just really, there's something to be said for being there with a group of people that share your vision and understand what it's all about. It's just really powerful. So on Friday, when Jen Biev came to corporate, she started out by um, pretty much echoing um, what Bob Heilig said to us at convention. Um, and one of the thing, one of the things that Bob Heilig said at convention that spoke directly to my heart was he said, you are not here by accident. It is not an accident that you are here. Um, and I really believe that because I, I mean, part of my story is really um, God prompting me to, to start this and just that feeling that you just can't deny when you know that prompting is coming from Heavenly Father. Um, that you should, that this is a vehicle for you to do whatever it is in your life. For me, it was to stay home with my kids. Um, and she said, so on Friday, Jan Biev said, we are in the right place at the right time. You are in the right, she said, you are in the right place at the right time. And I wrote it as we. Um, and that really, so she, from the beginning, she just captured me like, yes, I really believe that. And she talked a lot about us being, that there's a train. And so many of us are just dancing on the platform and not stepping on the train. Or we step on, we step off, we step on, we step off, we step on, we step off. And that the train is, is about to leave and we need to be on that train. And she said, nobody crosses the threshold, meaning getting that threshold from the platform to the train with confidence. Confidence comes after competence. You have to be bad in order to get good. And I loved that. I loved her saying that, that nobody is stepping on that train with confidence. We all start off bad. And the only way we can get good is to keep doing it. And that's when we gain the confidence. It doesn't come before that. She said, we quit because we feel bad about the process of getting good. Um, and I put a huge old box around that. We quit because we feel bad about the process of getting good. Um, and that. Um, that was my first like, oh, teary eyed, like, yes, I need to stop um, feeling bad about this process and quitting and saying I'm not good enough and I don't know what I'm doing and this is too hard and overwhelming. Um, she said, you don't have to find success. You have to lose your excuses. And um, she talked about leaving your past in the past, that today is a new day and you can step forward into your future. Um, and then I loved this next part. She said, worry is the misuse of the gift of imagination. And I love that. Um, Aaron and I have talked a lot about that um, with Aaron's anxiety. He talks, he, he talks a lot about how his imagination is kind of, it has just run away. And that's exactly what it is. His big imagination now kind of uses it against him. Um, and then she talked about, um, a lot of what other people say, what, you know, what you tell yourself, then your brain is going to look for evidence of that. So if you're telling yourself, I'm not good at this, I can't enroll anybody, um, I don't know what to say, I never say the right thing, then your brain is going to look for evidence of that and it's going to be true. And so changing that story that we tell ourselves and not letting other people stop us. She said, you need to, in your head, say to people, your lack of vision for your life is not going to stop me from sharing my vision with others. Um, she said, selling is about serving our friends. She talked a lot about um, that we really just have to get to know people and understand it. It's, it's all about serving our friends. It's all emotional. She talked about it being an emotional, talk, um, talked about um, it being an emotional decision, especially for women. Women do not buy things just on facts. Women buy things from an emotional standpoint. Um, she said people are craving this community. And um, I really believe that. I posted a lot about the community this last weekend, and I had a couple of people reach out and say that that, you know, that that looks really amazing. And um, so she said, it's so much bigger than the money. It really is about, she said, the world needs us to be successful, to be able to be a blessing to others. 
And then she talked about the me, it's the simple list, me plus three, them plus three. Um, again, she said, be willing to be bad to get good. And she talked, then she talked about how we have the most amazing leaders on our team. Um, and that was kind of reiterated over and over again throughout the weekend. Um, I don't think, I don't know if any other team has done a retreat like this at, at, um, in Scottsdale to take everybody to, to the headquarters. I don't know if that's ever been done, but Jen Biev did say on Saturday that he said, you know how many times I've been asked to do a retreat like this since I've been at Plexus? And we're all like, well, I don't know. She said zero. This was her first time she had been asked. And so um, she said, we need to play Simon Says with our leaders. When they tell us to do something, we say how high, how far, and how often. Um, and then she just, she was just awesome. So that was kind of the end. Those are the nuggets that I got from her little training on Friday. And I encourage you to watch the video. It's, she's just so good. She just really knows how to connect and how to say it like it is in such a good way. At least for me, it just really speaks to me and I, I understand it and, um, I get really motivated. I love, um, love her. I love her charisma. And I love yes, her visual. Yes. And she's just super real. So yeah. good. And I think that that like the thing that really hit me the most was the um be bad to get good because yeah. we are so stuck and me, I am too, stuck on finding the perfect way to do everything before we do it, that we just get stuck in our own way and we just have to keep yeah. doing it bad. <laughs> I mess up, I mess up, I mess up, I eventually get better, so. Well, yeah, and I listened to um, a podcast this morning from Jody Moore about all or nothing mentality, and that was really good, and I think it speaks to some of that, um, definitely me, if it's not perfect and good and all in this neat little box, then we just don't even try, and that's not how you move forward, and it shouldn't have to be like that. So um, before I tell you what she said on Saturday, on Friday night at the house, a woman named Janice Jackson came. I kept thinking they were saying Janet Jackson. I was like, what are we having a dance party? Janet Jackson? Her name is Janice Jackson, and she is one of, she's even above Jen Biev. She's one of the executives. And so she came to the house to speak, but she's from Scotland. And I don't remember hearing her speak. I don't think she spoke at convention. At least I don't remember. Um, she has this really cute Scottish accent, and she has been in the direct selling business for almost her entire career. And um, she was with Amway for a really long time and was like in charge of, I don't know, 160 products and 85 countries. And she's like a sales director or something like that. And so she lived in Michigan. I think that's where their headquarters is in Michigan. And she, um, retired and her goal after her retirement um, was to create an online marketplace to empower women and have, I, I don't know exactly, she didn't explain what that was going to look like or she just said it was going to be an online marketplace to empower women. And Tarl called her one day and they, they knew of each other and had met in passing at one of the industry events or whatever. And Tarl, she told Tarl, no, I'm, you know, I'm not interested. I retired and this is what I'm doing. And he said, well, if you're in Scottsdale, why don't you come and, and see us and let's have a conversation. And she said, great, I'm going to see my daughter in LA. I'll stop in Phoenix on the way um, out there. And so her and Tarl and Alec met at Tarl's house and they spoke one day, she said, we had this long six hour conversation just about the industry and our philosophies. And she said, um, you know, I realized at the end of my conversation with them that they were like I was, I consider myself a servant leader. And she said, and I considered myself that way long before that term was even coined. And she said, I realized that they were like that. And um, at the end, she's like, no, you know, I'm, I'm retired. And Tarl said, well, you know, you spoke about empowering women. He said, uh, we have 700,000 women that need you. And she said at that moment, she realized not only were they really good leaders, but they were also really good salesmen. <laughs> and so she, they were, she, she came back to her husband. They just built this house in Michigan. And she came back and said, um, we're moving to Scottsdale. <laughs> so 18 months ago, she was hired. And since in the last 18 months, she has been the force behind hiring all of these different people 
And she said, we are finally getting to the point where we have like most of the people in place now. And she said, and I have really specific questions that I ask in interviews because the people that we hire have to fit in with this culture. They have to be servant leaders and understand what that means. And she talked a little bit about a couple of people that she's hired and if this guy who's even like three weeks into the company, nobody's really met him. And, and, um, and she said, we are, we're ready to go. And that was one of the things that Tarl talked about. So both Tarl and Alec came and spoke to us on Friday at corporate and Tarl talked about the fact that this, a couple of things about this company, a it's debt free. That is unheard of in the MLM industry and B that they are growing slowly at this point in Plexus's career with the, how big it is and the size of it and the weird number of years it's been in business, it should be much bigger, but they believe in growing small and that everybody, it doesn't matter who you are. You have to come in and start at the bottom, pay the 39 95 and build your team. Everybody does that. And so they talk about how unique that is in this um, company. And so Janice kind of reiterated all of that, that this is a really unique company and that they don't go into, they should be in like 85 countries by now and they're not because Carl said, we believe that every country should get the same type of service that the home country gets. And if you grow too quickly, that doesn't happen. And so they are growing very slow to build this legacy company. And she used that term as well. And so she was just really, um, she had a lot of good things to say and, and really um, her mission is to empower women. And so it was really interesting to talk to her. We were all just sitting around the pool. I mean, we were glued to this woman and I felt really lucky because during dinner she came, they came out to the table that a bunch of us were sitting around and she sat right next to me. And I just felt like this little, um, I don't know, this little peon and here I am sitting next to the cool people. It was really, it was really fun. Um, so just, um, to wrap it up, I just wanted to think, do you know what? that powerhouse too? You know that, right? I don't see that. I, I know but training. When I see you next to a person, I'm like equal, like you're just as amazing <laughs> as they are. <laughs> I, thought I didn't feel that way, but it was really cool to be, well, I kept thinking, okay, I want to be a diamond because I want to be able to go up to Jen Biev and say, and have her know me and it be like, I don't feel, or Janice know me or whatever, like Emily and Brooke do, you know? So, um, that was, and I've always been motivated by that to like be close to, you know, very strong women that is appealing to me. Um, so really quickly, Jen Biev wrapped things up on Saturday. Um, she came in and talked for probably about 20 or 25 minutes about the Emerald Extravaganza. And she said, I don't think we advertise this a month enough. What an amazing trip this is. And this is so fascinating, ladies, because I know you all will understand this. I'm sitting there and she is saying this. She says exactly this. If you all could see how amazing this is and how oh, like crazy, kind of over the top, how much it makes you feel, any sacrifice would be worth it to be there. And I kept looking around like, is, are we having a gospel discussion here? Because this is exactly what we say in the church. If we could know what living in the celestial kingdom is like, we would make any sacrifice. Like we would do anything to get there. And that's what she was saying about this trip. She was saying, you know, it is amazing. It, it is amazing accomplishment. She said, it's at, it's at a place that you would never pay for on your own. And um, it is worth every sacrifice that you make to be able to go on this trip. It, um, kind of, that rewards you for, you know, your hard work and, and what you're doing in the company. Um, she said, no excuse is big enough not to go on the Emerald trip. And she kept saying on Saturday, she kept saying, ignore your butt. Ignore your butt. And I loved that. Um, that really spoke to me. I have that all the time. Oh, I should be doing my IPA, but... I want to do blah, 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 or I'm, too, but I'm too tired or I'm too scared. She said that probably 10 times, ignore your butt. Um, sales is an emotional decision first, always lead with excitement. So leading with excitement means saying things like, you're going to be so excited about this. And you create a question in their mind. 
yes, I'm so excited. What am I so excited about? You don't say, I'm so excited for this, which is exactly what I've done just that morning about the pumpkin spice, whatever. I'm so excited about this. No, you're going to be so excited about this. And then you start putting people in buckets. Who are the buckets of people? Who's in the bucket that this protein shake is all about convenience? They love the convenience. They're going to love the convenience of it. Who is it that um, it would be amazing for moms to give their kids after school as a snack? Like, who's looking for that? Who is vegan and is just going to love the option of the vanilla vegan? Who is a philanthropist and would buy it because they know a bag of it is going to feed, uh, feed families at whatever organization? Um, and so what are those buckets of people? And then you speak. To each of those as you're um as you are to, when you're talking to them you get in on their in their bucket and tell them how excited they're going to be because um so saying something like we just announced this new pumpkin spice clean well that's info people don't care about info it's salesy so don't do that lead with excitement um which was really good for me to hear um and also, no shame, blame, or regret. It puts them in the flight or flight mode. So no saying, you missed out, or something like that. Just don't do that, because that, that puts them on the defensive. Um, she said, OK, and here's where we get to the meat of what I loved, what that got me really fired up on Saturday. She said, this business is simple. You, if you reach out to three new people a day about Plexus, she said, I promise you. She said, you can do this five times a week. You don't even have to do it every day of the week. If you reach out to three new people about Plexus five times a week, you will be on the Emerald trip next year. And she said, this, um, this means you're adding to your funnel because you need three new people every day to be able to reach out to. But if you're doing that, you are going to grow your business. She said, most people will say no at first. No is way better than nothing, meaning it's better to get a no than to not ask anything and it's just, there's just a nothing. Um, and so when you have that fear that somebody's gonna say no, it's better than you not doing anything. Statistically, you're gonna get three to six no's and then you'll get a yes. And she said, if you don't, she said, that's why that workbook, Leah, I think you have the workbook. She talks about the workbook that was created by her. And she says, if you can track this statistically, if you can track your nose, there's these little bubbles that you like make check marks. If you can track this and you are, you can figure out what your statistics are. And if your statistics don't match this industry wide statistic, then we have to go back and look at, okay, what are the messages that you're, that you're sending? Because statistically, if you're sending the right messages, you should be getting a yes every three to six months. <coughs> She said, Once, when you do this, when you start sharing three to, with three new people a day, five times a week, your results will come in 45 to 60 days. You will start to see results. And the problem is, is that most people stop and say after three weeks and say, oh, this isn't working. I don't have anybody. But you can't quit. Results come in 45 to 60 days. It's the same thing that we tell our customers on Plexus. Give it 90 days of consistent, taking the products consistently every day, drinking your water, not consuming tons of junk food and sugar. It's just the same thing. We need to be reaching out to people, three people, new people every day, and then doing some follow-up and um, you know, posting on our social media. And if we're doing those things consistently, like she's saying, she said, we will see results in 45 to 60 days. Um, and she said, best way to create a behavior is to attach it to an existing behavior. I need to reach out to one person and then I can eat breakfast. I need to reach out to my second person and, you know, then I can, you know, go to the store or whatever it is. Whatever behavior you already have, attach sending a message to that. And that's what will create that behavior. I loved that. That's exactly what I need. And today I did that all day today. I can um, do, do the breakfast dishes when I've sent one message. I can play with my kids for 15 minutes after I've sent a message. Um, and that worked for me today. It was awesome. 
She said, there are some mistakes that people make in this business. The first mistake is that people stop personally sponsoring. Um, and she said, that's a mistake. You need to keep personally sponsoring. It's how you get better and better. Um, and she said, you're going to attract different kinds of people when you're a silver versus when you're a diamond or a double diamond. Brooke attracts different people right now as a double diamond than she did when she was, you know, a ruby. And so you're missing out. If you stop personally sponsoring as your business, as your team grows, you're missing out on a whole other set of people that will be attracted to you because of the rank that you're at or the place that you're at. Um, the second mistake is that you only work, uh, you only work with six to nine people. So this doesn't really apply, I think, to us, maybe to you, Leah, but she talks about how you, people get like six to nine people working and then they just only work with them and they don't really try to go out and build other things. Um, and then she said, and this spoke to me because I'm guilty of this. The best time to rank up is when you've just ranked up. And she said, so many people rank up and then they, and then they take, oh, I need time off. I'm so tired. No, you keep going. And it doesn't mean that you are in crazy, like yesterday was a crazy end of the month day. So there was a lot of so I was a little out of balance. That doesn't mean that you're like that, but you keep going, meaning you keep reaching out to three new people every day. You keep following up. You don't quit the next day after you've ranked up and then come back a month later and expect you to be able to keep going. Um, yep. Because guess what? If you don't keep going, it'll drop. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I've done that lots of times. You don't want to. So she said, so she was asked for some message ideas and she said, um, she said, you have to come at it with love and understanding. So she said, I have no idea if this is for you, but I think it's worth you checking out for yourself. I have blah, 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 you know, and then you go into your message. But like couching it in that so people aren't put on the defensive. Um, I loved that. Um, she also recommended a book, The Traveler's Heart. I don't know the author. I'm going to have to look. I still have, I need to look it up. But she said, do you have a committed heart? Commitment is different than success. Commitment is different than success. I what love is that. Called again? It's called The Traveler's Heart. I was talking to Kara about we might do that for book club, but we need to talk about that tomorrow. Do you have a committed heart? Commitment is different than success. Um, and I, for me, that spoke to me because I think Number one, I need to be more committed. But number two, that's why I'm still here, because I'm committed. For me, I've been committed from the time I decided this is what I'm going to do. I've been committed, even though I haven't been that successful at it. But I've been committed, and so I'm still here. Um, she talked about micro asks. Don't ask them for a big thing right up front. You do small micro asks. Go slow. Make it about them, have a dialogue, and then bring it up. I wondered if you wanted to check it out for yourself. So she talks about how people get stuck in relationship mode and they, they make it about them, they have a dialogue, and then they never bring it up. And she said, you have to stop that. And you just make it about them. Just wondered if you wanted to check it out for yourself. It's no big deal. She said, don't make it a big deal. It's not a big deal. I have no idea if this is a fit for you, I have no idea if your health is in order. I have no idea if you need to make a little extra money. So like putting it out there, I don't know if you need this, I don't know what your situation is, but here's what I have to offer you. Would you like to check it out? And they talked about how the send, share, invite, and the workbook was all that, all of that was created by Jen Viev. And so that is the bread and butter of what we should be doing. Then she had an awesome idea. I loved this. She said, once a week, I had a gratitude day. She said, my gratitude day was on Friday. And I would send all of the people who said no to me a thank you. Even though you said no, thank you for being a safe place to share my vision. Wow. I loved that. She's thanking them for allowing her to share with them. And I said, no. 
And she's, she said, every Friday, that's what I did. She said, you don't have to convince, you're just connecting. No convincing, just connecting. And then the other idea she said was, um, let me break this down for you. So you could say that. Let me break this down for you. Our company is all about gut health, blah, 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 blah. But I just love that phrase. Let me break this down for you. Like that you're going to give it to them in little chunks. And it's not salesy. It's not um, weird. And then she said, don't tell yourself stories about the reply. You don't tell yourself stories about the reply. They said no. Okay. That doesn't, it doesn't matter. She said this. You don't tell yourself stories about the reply. Sky is blue. The leaves are green. They said no. I'm going to have a lead. <laughs> and then she goes, oh, that rhymes. She just made it up right there. On the spot. Oh, that rhymes. So funny. Sky is blue. The leaves are green. They said no. I'm going to go have a lead. <laughs> like, stop telling stories about their reply. It doesn't matter. They said no. Who cares? Great. In fact, the no, you want that. You want them to reply. You want them to, you want that reply. And that makes you closer to a yes. And then I love it because she talked a little bit about, um, she said, I hate it when people say, oh, that, you know, MLMs, nobody ever, you know, only a few people ever, you know, succeed in that. And she said, that is life. Like, it's, it's life. <coughs> it's not like everybody in these huge companies are all the CEOs. There's one CEO. So why, you know, why would this be any different? I just loved that. And then she said that she loves the baseball analogy. Baseball players are paid millions of dollars to miss more than they hit. Baseball players are terrible hitters. And so I, that really spoke to me. I'm like, yes, that's, right. that's true. And so us going out and getting three no's a day, great. But that yes that comes in the middle of the week in between all these no's is going to be the gold mine. And you needed to change that person's life. You're going to change that one person's life, and that could make all the difference to them and their family, whether it's their health or their finances. And is that worth all the other no's throughout the rest of the week? Ooh, I love that baseball analogy. That's I know. So good. Powerful. Because we're getting paid for that because it helps us grow. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. That's it, it helps us get better. And we're sifting through the people. We're sifting through the people that we know to find those that need this and want it. And the last thing she said is, I am a Hamilton fan. And she loves the phrase. I, I haven't seen Hamilton, so I don't know when this is. But so in one of the songs, I think she said, she loves the phrase, I'm not going to miss my shot. And that's what she left us with. And it was so inspiring. And I mean, we were all just sitting there like this, like just bated breath as she talked. It was amazing. It was so wonderful. And she's really, she's really amazing. I was super inspired. I love, I love her thing of this is simple. You three people a day. And that really spoke to me and helped me be able to kind of organize it in my head and know what I needed to do. And, you know, um, the push retreat was interesting because it was a four day thing. And um, my, my push goal was the same as my was happened to be the same as the monthly goal that I had set at the beginning of the month. And it was hard. And I remember it was a really hard month and making my goal, which was to, um, rank um, gold was super, super hard. But this retreat made a, I mean, it was all to me, it showed me that any work I do, any sacrifice I make is worth these types of things. Um, because if the Emerald, I mean, if this little tiny little push retreat, if the Emerald trip is that much, I mean, it is worth, it's worth it. And I thought it was worth it to try to get to Hawaii in February because, um, it just lit a fire in me and it is so gratifying to be with 40 women. There was four, I mean, I think there was about 40 of us there, 40 women who are of like mind. And, um, there's just something to be said for the energy and the passion and feeling like you're part of something bigger than you. That is really amazing. So I'm really, I'm really glad I got to go and I feel really 
be blessed. Oh, thank you so much for sharing that. It's, it really is. It, I feel like I want to take them with me into my home so that we can all be excited together. Cause it's so hard to like be there and like feel excited. And then you get home and you're like life, <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's, it's amazing to like, I'm still riding the wave. So I yeah. feel like, um, just keep riding it. Keep riding. It. Yes. But also I feel like, okay, I need to be at these throughout the year to help push me to keep, so I can ride that wave to the next one. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, exactly. And that's why they do it. It's like the yeah. belief building and the excitement and the, ah, it's so amazing. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Thank you so much for sharing. I loved seeing you there. Like I put with, on the on the like stories, seeing you you there with you with them in the crowd, that was so inspiring. And then to just hear everything you learned, I, it's so so inspiring. So I'm so glad that you shared. Thank you. Just one thing about that. So it was super weird to be there <laughs> with Brooke and Emily and Chelsea and Christy, who I follow on Instagram, and I, they're kind of like celebrities to me. Like I like I know their life you know, and I see, that, but I interact, I interact with them through their stories. They don't interact with me, but I interact with them through their stories. And then to be standing right next to them or to see them posting a story just right over there. I was like, I felt like I was in the midst of all these celebrities. It was the weirdest <laughs> feeling ever. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. I yeah. love that. It's yeah. funny. Cause like, I, I saw, I saw Chelsea join, you know what I mean? So it's like, they're, they just seem like friends to me, but yeah. like, but there are other diamonds that seem like that to me, like Sarah Marble and, you know, like, oh, yeah. the other thing that it just reminded me of is, you know, I connected with a bunch of women there. It was really fun. I just love connecting with women. And I just kept thinking there, there are others in my network and in San Antonio that are like this too. And I just have to find them that need this, want this, can do this. And I just have to find them. They are out there. And then Brooke being able to pull all of us in like that proves that. And so it just inspired me that there are other people like that. It doesn't, it's okay. Yep. Yep. And to think about how, you know, Chelsea said no to, to Emily for like two years or something. Like, yeah, they talked about keep, that. You got to keep asking. Yeah. Um, okay. Real quick. I want to talk about the incentives for this month. Um, and just kind of explain because there's a lot, there's a lot. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to get my notes out real quick. So I don't misquote them. Hold on real quick. Okay. So where, what, what I posted it. Okay. Sorry. Hold on. I'm getting there. I for sure thought I posted it, but I don't think I did. <laughs> okay, so the first one is the extra bonuses. Okay, so if you enroll three, there is a bonus of 150, I believe. Sorry, I'm trying to find it. Yeah, it's 150. Six is 500. It's not where I thought it was. Okay, six is 500, and nine is 650. Thank you, Rebecca. And 12 is a thousand. Okay. So like every six you get, you get an extra $200 basically, right? Isn't that how it works? Um, but they already added it all for us. So it's a big chunk of money. Okay. It's, it will pay for your Christmas basically. Right. Um, but on top of that, so that's for October on top of that is the re-ranking bonus. And this is not just for like, your highest rank. It can be like, for me, I, it's really exciting for me because I can re-rank senior gold and then rate and then re-rank Ruby and get both of those bonuses. Okay. And so for anyone who ranked silver, who lost rank, they can get $50, but not only them, you get $50 as their sponsor. Okay. So if you had anyone rank silver under you, they can re-rank and get a bonus and you get a bonus. The other thing is, um, that is all on top of the regular, like welcome pack bonuses, regular rank up bonuses. Like it's all on top of that. Um, and so I want to hear what your guys' goal is for October and then what your goal is 
by December because we also have the all in retreat that will end at the end of December. So it's like now or never go time this month if we want to go to Hawaii in February, right? So I want to hear your dreams and goals and um, your October goal and then through December goal. And really quick before we do that, I just wanted to say that today during IPA, I had an idea of like focusing the IPA time to be doing like more concentrated things. So, um, you know, one, like, and I haven't set it out yet, but I, I will be thinking about it tonight about, you know, um, grouping it together because I know for me, I'll be like, every time I have to switch tasks, it's like, it's hard for me. Like it takes time to switch to a different task. And so if I just like group it together and do like a whole bunch of the same thing, you know, like follow up Friday or whatever, like I am way more productive if I just keep doing the same thing. And so I'm trying to think of a way to group it so that each day we do something that's just like focus for a full hour on that one thing. So if you have ideas on that, just text them to me. <laughs> but I, I have something coming. I'm excited. Um, so I want to hear just if you haven't written it down, just the top of your head, like what your goals are for October and December. Anybody want to start? I can start. Yay. Thank you, Rebecca. Um, so my goal for um, my goal for October is to uh, um, to sponsor at least six and maybe even get the goal get to nine. Um, but my goal, really, my goal for this week is to three people to sign up and one silver, um, which I have some in kind of in the pipeline that are I'm working on that are going to be good. Um, and so, yeah, I really want some of that extra cash and I want to re-rank. That's the other thing. I want to re-rank gold, um, to get that 120. So I'll get $125 for re-ranking gold. So I really want that, um, as well. And then for the end of December, I really want the, of course, now I want the, you know, the retreat even more to Hawaii. And so for that, um, I need to sign up 12 level ones, develop two silvers, and rank up to senior gold. And so that's my goal by the end of December. Yes, you can totally make this happen. You can do it. Because especially three if you people a day. Three people yep. a day. Yes, three people a day. Just think of that. Awesome. Okay, my goal, I'll do my goal. Um, for this month, I also want to, I want to hit six for sure um, enrollments and I want to get two silvers. Um, I'm going to, what I'm going to do for silvers though, is I'm going to, and this is re-rank or new silvers. Um, I'm going to do all that I can to like develop like seven silvers, but I'm hoping that if I'm trying to enroll, you know, develop seven that I'll get the two, you know, cause we got to like increase our numbers. So silvers are just like enrollments. We have to increase our numbers. So I'm trying to think of it differently. Um, and then the all in retreat. Um, I have my checklist <laughs> um, for each month. It's all, it's all set, but um, I have to, I didn't quite do it in September. So I need to kind of pick up from that, but basically it's like enroll for a month um, and get a silver a month and then re-rank ruby by december so that's my goals um and i think i can make it happen and i'm gonna go for the three a day as well i have my um my action goal set at 10 a day just regular all you know all types of messages but i'm gonna really focus on doing three plexus reach outs a day in those 10 so who's next april shannon anybody Got some ideas? Want to declare? Okay. Um, I I don't know. I've been kind of out of 
for a while. <laughs> um, so I would like to at least get three this month and um, help at least one of my people either earn silver or re-rank silver. Um, so that's this month for the all in retreat. I don't know. I guess I had it in my mind that I wouldn't, wasn't eligible for that. So I don't know. I hadn't really created a goal for that though. I would love to be there, but I thought it was like senior gold and up. So, so I don't have anything prepared for that goal other than like my own consistency and working, which I need to get back into. So. Sorry, my kids are screaming around me so far. Um, so we will talk about that. I'll look into it. But there are some, um, what's the, what's it called? Wild card earners. Um, but I'll look at it and see. Because it might be senior gold. I don't know. But it's not. If you there, the wild card, you don't have to be senior gold. Okay. There's other requirements to get in, but you don't have to hit senior okay. gold. Okay. I want to say it was like enroll twenty or something, or I don't know. But I'll look into it. I know it's three silvers, and then enroll a certain amount. Okay, April. Okay, so. I was actually thinking really low, like trying to play it safe, but now I don't know if I want to play it safe. <laughs> so when I was playing it safe, I was just thinking I wanted to get three and I wanted three um, level ones and um, I wanted to build a silver. And, and then that would leave me only needing 35 more points to hit gold. And so I was hoping to sit down and plug the numbers in and figure out how to get gold because 35 is only seven more people and I already talked to my mom and she kind of wants to go silver again so that would be 10 more points right there and so I don't know <laughs> so I really like I, I just I don't know I don't want to set goals that I can, that I can't meet I don't want to I don't know so I kind of feel like maybe I should just I don't know. I don't know what I should do. What do you guys think? I'm ready to work. I'm ready to reach out to three people a day. I'm getting more comfortable with working and being consistent. My attitude is good. I've decided that I'm just, my only responsibility is to love the person I'm reaching out to. And that makes it really easy for me to show up in an authentic way. And it makes me really easy to reach out. Like there's no issues anymore. And so I'm ready to do it, but I don't really know how big I should think. What do you guys, what do you guys think? <laughs> I think if you get a big number in your mind, that's too scary. Like just, just make it big enough to where it pushes you, but not so big that you shut down. You know what I mean? So maybe go for three and then, and then once you hit three or like give yourself a, a limit, be like, I want to get three by this date and just start with that. And then yeah, maybe, maybe I want to try and get three smaller. this week. Yeah, kind of just like make them smaller bite-sized goals or even bigger bites <laughs> or bigger bites <laughs> um, than, we nor than we're normally used to. But we do, like, I feel like we've worked really hard on boundaries and I feel like we're good now with boundaries that we can like push those boundaries a little bit and still like be balanced. And you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I feel like we've worked really hard on that as a team. And so I think we're ready to like push ourselves out and be more focused in our, in our time and our goals, you know, especially mm -hmm. you. And I've seen that in so, you in the last few weeks. Okay. Well, so where I'm at now, so if, I mean, I like right now, like I went through my numbers and if I hit my goal, I only need 35 more. I can get 10 from my mom and I've got four people who normally order that just don't have their subscription on. And so those ones can automatically, so it could be pretty easy yeah. to get gold. Yes. And but sharing, sharing this incentive with people, people need Christmas money, you know, like, I feel like this is going to be big. If we share it, like you're, you're going to be so excited when you hear about this, like what Rebecca was saying, like 
if we're excited about it and we like paint this picture of really a huge opportunity, like people will get excited with this mm -hmm. and we'll find someone to share it with and then they'll catch the bug of like helping people, you know? Mm -hmm. April, have you watched Nicole Brinkerhoff's Silver? I did. I did. So I, I love that for the initial thing. So that's my question. So I have a new person and I did exactly what she said. And she's like, you know, I just don't know anybody. And I was like, okay, I don't know what to say. <laughs> she's like, I just don't know anybody right now. So I'm just going to get started and it'll be, it'll, everything's fine. I just don't know anybody who's going to want to do that. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, I don't have a clue what to say to that. So I, I'm meeting with her tomorrow because we go walking and she's getting her products tomorrow. And so I don't know what to do with that. Do I just let it go or do I see if she wants to, if she'll share on the internet? I mean, share on Facebook. I might, I might like do the Phil Felt Found with her. Be like, oh, you know, I know you said that you didn't have anybody to talk to about it. You know, I, I feel like I didn't have anybody to reach out to either. And then I realized that there were so many people that were struggling that they weren't, you know, telling me about it. Just kind of go into that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then tell her about like, you know, that it's a really good opportunity. Like that's what I would, but just be really excited about it. Mm -hmm. you know? Okay. I'm trying to find, there was somebody who was answering these. When was it? Trying to remember when it was, but that was one of them because I've encountered that, that too. Oh, I just don't know anybody. And the answer was, it's not about who you know. It's shoot. I'm gonna have to look for it, but I will put it in the thread when I find it because it was really good. It's it. It was something like it's not about who you know. Um, it's who you're gonna meet or some I'm not not that because that's weird but it was something <laughs> really good that like put it back like yeah it's really not it's not about you it's about the people that are around you and everybody has people that are around you nobody's isolated and so like helping them understand um it's just not about you I'll have to find it and when I find it I'll put it in the thread thank you Rebecca so good but also honoring that some people are just not going to share and they're going to come up with any excuse, you know, <laughs> I've been asking certain people, they just won't do it, you know, so it's okay, but mm -hmm. just keep sharing with passion and excitement. And I just want to, I just want something. I just, I want that to come easier, but I guess I'm, I'm doing it and I'm stinking at it. So here I am. Oh, good. <laughs> good. <laughs> on your way to getting good. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I just need you. Me too. Me too. Yeah, it's, it's all right. It it's all right. Just stink, right? <laughs> it's okay. It's, right. it's okay to stink. <laughs> all right, guys. I'm excited. I'm excited about this month. I'm excited about the changes and the incentives and the fire that Rebecca has lit under all of us. So thank you, Rebecca, for being excited. And it's our job to keep being excited. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. So this week, um, we're going to reach out, reach out three times a day. And next week, our team call is our book club. Yes. Canon, right? Yeah. What are the chapters that we're reading for that, by the way? Yes. What chapters um, are you reading? It's the third section of part one. I remember part one was like... <laughs> Section one, two, three. There's a third section of part one, and then the first three sections, I want to say, of part two. So I think we decided that one section a week was doable. So that's four sections total. Right. Is that correct, right, you guys? Third section of part one and first three sections of part two? Yeah. Okay. And they're pretty quick. I mean, it's a pretty short book and their short sections okay awesome thank you guys appreciate you i'm excited thank you excited all right let's go kill it <laughs> bye